Vicky, welcome to your channel, Wildly Wonderful World. Uh, this is Vidya and uh, we are a family of three, my husband Shashi and our two and a half year old daughter Ava Grace. Uh, we live down in the Pacific Northwest, uh, uh, precisely in Maple Valley, Washington. And Friends, uh, this video is basically go going to be a garden tour. This is our first ever garden. Uh, we bought this house um, just a little over a year ago, uh, last summer and uh, we have been rebuilding it, um, renewing it and with a specific goal in our mind, uh, each element of our garden has been uh, made with an intention of creation care uh, to, bring, to be inviting not just uh, for, our own, for our own benefit but uh, for living things around us, both what we can see and what we cannot see. So you will see that as we talk about um, our garden and I hope this will be an encouragement uh, to all new gardeners out there. So this is not a gar channel that I would be teaching you how to garden, that's not the goal, but basically uh, to discuss and build a community around uh, gardening um, or gardeners specifically who would want to have a garden that is inclusive uh, of all creatures and that it's more conscious about uh, building a garden that is earth friendly and sustainable and loving um, and has principles of creation care within it. I, I hope I have not complicated it, but you will see what I'm talking about as we go around. Are you guys ready? Yes. Uh, let's start with the lawn first. Um, so as you see it today, um, when we bought the house, it was basically um, a very weedy patch. Uh, I will share a video of uh, how it was when we bought it and what all we did uh, to make it the way it is today. Uh, just a bit of our lawn. Uh, I have seen uh, the traditional lawn uh, is basically predominantly grass but um, when I read about it um, the grass as it is we see today is a sign of prosperity um, but at the same time it didn't definitely represent what nature was. Uh, what we see around us isn't as uniform as we see in a traditionally neatly manicured lawn which requires a lot of maintenance, a lot of fertilizing, a lot of water. So I wanted a lawn that was more earth friendly so I chose this uh, from Pro Time Lawn Seed. It's a, a seed company from Oregon. Uh, so this is a 769 uh, R&R uh, Pro Turf. Uh, with micro clover. So basically it's a blend of three different grass, uh, sheep uh, fescue, uh, hard fescue um, and uh, rye grass, a perennial rye grass and a mix of micro clover as you see. Uh, so all of the grass varieties within it are quite drought tolerant and actually there is a benefit to having micro clover as many of you know micro clover fixes uh, nitrogen within the soil so uh, it is a good companion plant for the grass it feeds the grass as well um, and it is also quite uh, drought tolerant it has deeper roots so it retains the moisture levels within the soil uh, and uh, even in the highest of summers it will stay green uh, so your lawn wouldn't uh, turn into a brown patch I'm sure as you can see with our lawn as well um, so it's very very low maintenance uh, it you know once it's established it took almost an year to establish once estab less than a year if i should say uh, and once established you don't need to add any fertilizers within it just normal compost once in a while and then uh, it's good to go it's quite drought tolerant you don't need to water as you do with a traditional lawn so and there's another benefit which i definitely want to talk about as you see the microclover we have let it bloom um, there is a reason uh, the microclover blooms are quite attractive to honeybees and different kinds of um, uh, flying things it provides good food for them so this was quite intentional we didn't uh, we wanted our lawn uh, to be friendly to all of the creatures so uh, we love the honeybees that hover around it um, it, it benefits the uh, honeybees at the same time it also benefits our garden uh, so we are seeing quite good yields right in our first uh, year thanks to all the honeybees that have been visiting us um, so yeah, this is what I was talking about, you know, designing a yard. Um, I've done quite some research and this was my favorite. Uh, it's quite shade tolerant as well because ours is a yard that faces um, north. It's not quite sunny. So this is a good rod tolerant um, seat. I will share the link uh, in the description bo box for you if any of you are interested in this variety. 
this is how uh, the lawn looks once it's mowed down so it's very clean and very full so uh, let's next move to the layout of the garden so as you see um, it's not a super huge one but um, it's a good size uh, for an urban yard uh, so as you see we have uh, four beds technically there is one here right here this to this end uh, we have this is quite shady um, not much of a sun so we have had leafy greens that are that are good uh, quite good winter vegetables that like shade so there is a fern going up there and then here's a squash uh, and this is huckleberry so the goal is to ha have more shade tolerant plants around here this is the evergreen huckleberry the native plant from our place we'll talk more about native plants in probably in the next episodes uh, so this is a squash uh, uh, a crooked neck yellow squash i think that that's the variety and you see this is the green amaranthus and the red amaranthus and then there are a bunch of um, yellow sunny marigolds up here um, beautiful ones love those colors oh. and <laughs> the best part about marigolds is when you water you really get a beautiful scent out of it and shashi and i love the uh, love, love the beautiful uh, smell and you see these are three blueberry plants um, this is nero blueberry and then this is chandler variety and then this is legacy so i bought all three varieties from a local fruit nursery and um, yeah, uh, so yeah, they need each other for higher productivity. So I have grouped them all three of them together. Because up here, this is a squash growing, and this is our <laughs> this is our neighbor's plant. He just crawled into our space, so we are letting it grow. Um, so I am not very sure what it is, but we'll see. Um, and this is again a squash, the same variety I was talking about. And this is actually an Indian plant. We call it uh, chikruka in our language. Uh, it's, I think in English it's kind of like a hyacinth bean. Um, and then I have, this is also an Indian plant up here. I just had one seed of it. Uh, it's called snake guard plant. Um, and then it's still small. It's a baby plant. We'll see. I don't know if it'll come into fruition. creeping plants uh, in the backdrop and um, the shorter bush type varieties in the front. So these are all hyacinth beans and this is cucumber as you see it has given us very good harvest. Uh, so we have at least six, six to seven right now fully formed if you see right here there's one, there is one right here, there are actually two up there, one is in the formation stage. So this is our, our runner beans variety up here and then as you know again they are nitrogen fixers and they support what's underneath here which is um, a strawberry it's, they are all june bearing strawberry varieties um, i got it on offer up actually somebody was selling at some uh, runners so i had bought it from her um, from a local uh, person here who was selling it and we had a good harvest i should say right in the first season so as you see the strawberry sending out runners so hopefully we can transplant them to another place in the yard I always wanted a tree, so but given the size of the yard, it's kind of not enough space. So we have an espalier tree. Again, this is from a local nursery. I think they have four different varieties of apple branches on it. Uh, we put in that, and then these are actually garlic chives. Um, the ones up there, um, they are good good companion plants again for an apple tree in terms of protection. Um, good pest resistant variety up there, uh, and then we have marigolds. Uh, so these are petite petite marigolds and they don't this one grew quite tall but those are the ones i'm talking about quite petite and goes well under um, under the apple utilizing the space around and this is again uh, our neighbor's plant uh, she just creeped in so pretty it's a local fern which you see among the trees and we're lucky to have this plant come in voluntarily and then yeah i think this is one section and then we're going to talk about these three uh, beds uh, as you see very simple three beds this is a plant this is actually a green amaranthus i've let it go to seed because the seeds are quite uh, expensive to buy so i wanted to grow them and share with friends so i've let it seed um, and then we have a tomato right tomato here this is the sunniest part of this section so 
It's quite an abundant harvest. It's an Oregon variety. I don't remember the name exactly. Yeah, it's an Oregon spring variety. And then there are carrots underneath. Carrots love tomatoes. If you know what I'm talking about, it's a book. I, I, I would put it in the description box. They're good companion plants. To These are spring onions. Um, and then I have left it empty. We'll see what goes in there. And then if you see around, those are peas, um, snap peas, sugar snap peas. And then this is radish. I have let it go, go to seed. I wanted to harvest seed. And these pears have been left for seeds too. I've done with a couple of harvests with these. Uh, they have gone, done really well. Um, and this is a cabbage variety. As you see, it's been quite eaten by insects. I have to take care of them. We'll look at it later. And then up there, you see high acid beans in production. Um, the one I was talking to you earlier about, the high acid beans. So as you see, uh, just a sm small thing I wanted to share was I have let these uh, radishes go to seed. Uh, so I, they have got done beautiful flowers, a lot of bees coming around, a uh, lot of wind. And I think it helped with our tomato production too, in a way. Uh, Lovage uh, plant, we'll talk about it later. This is an Indian, it's a purslane, it's an Indian variety of purslane, and then this is the same amaranthus that we were talking about earlier. This is coriander, I've let it go to seed. I have loved it with flowers, there were a number of bees around and uh, they loved it. As you see, it's coming to seed, and that's mint over there. And then this is the section we had, um, it's from Northwest Meadowscapes, uh, they had this beautiful. Um, wildflower variety it's a mix of grass and wildflowers so we have loved uh, seeing this area i just wanted it to be left uh, kind of like a meadow so it's a beautiful section and that's the other part of the yard with the same variety of grass um, around so yeah this is a front yard so we have two parts uh, towards towards this east side we have probably a six by let's say 20 square feet of uh, block so we removed this uh, grass that was here and planted some plants so let's we'll just take you around um, if you come this way we have some okra plants up here it's, it's got beautiful flowers coming and a little tiny okra up here so and then uh, these are a couple of plants that one of my friends gave me i think it's a creeping bean variety uh, and then, yeah, we keep this, we keep going the other way. At the end, this is a cantaloupe, uh, sweet cantaloupe variety. So I had sown this from seed. This plant has come beautifully and a couple of fruits, as you can see one here. And then a small tiny fruit in process here. So this, uh, it has been growing well and then again a couple of okra plants here. If you see this was the same same variety of trans, uh, seed transplant and that <laughs> didn't quite do well but direct sown seed has doing much better. And then these are some red chilies that yeah they seem to be doing okay. I don't know what's troubling the plant but we'll see. They look so pretty with the flowers. So we are now at the Four Sisters block. Um, so this is inspired from the Native uh, American method uh, where they have traditionally have three plants, uh, three sister plants that support each other. So they have corn, beans and a squash plant and then additionally a fourth sister uh, a flowering sister which could be a sunflower so i haven't used the native varieties um, but probably next time i would do that uh, so here i have used uh, sweet corn uh, this is a sweet corn flower and then you have beautiful corns coming so this is a small block uh, probably five plants uh, and four plants along five by four so there are around 20, probably 19 to 20 plants in this block. 
so with almost one feet apart so it's a very tight block um, and this way there is not just half feet apart and they seem to be doing okay and then um, if you come this way we would see the beans uh, so they have beautiful flowers coming and the fruit seems they started fruiting the beans and then this is the squash plant so just to explain a little further so the corn is told to be a good eater it likes to eat it needs good food and then the beans as you know is a nitrogen fixer so the beans um, the bean plants fix nitrogen in the soil which feeds the corn plant and the corn stalks kind of help the bean these runner beans can actually wrap around the corn stalks and grow around grow use that as you see up there but uh, <laughs> the bean variety I chose <laughs> seemed to be too longer than the corn variety that I chose so that's a mistake on my part maybe we can look at it later um, and then we the squash plants down below have big leaves they're still tiny right now but the original proposal being the big leaves kind of cover the ground, ground keeping it a bit cooler and protect the plant from weeds so that's the variety that's the purpose of the squash plant and as you know the flowering plant attract pollinators for the plants so here I have beautiful sunflowers coming so around those two I have sunflowers up there and here so that's the four sisters grid and the sunflowers are absolutely gorgeous so pretty put uh, as you see here the grass is all dead we put cardboard on top of it so to kill the grass and the weeds within uh, to extend the yard and these are actually the grass clippings from mowing the lawn I dry it up and use it as mulch for this is a compost bin it's kind of just a sh metal sheet wrapped around with zip ties so uh, it's very simple DIY method of uh, composting so I have all the grass clippings and um, the yard waste coming into this and becoming beautiful compost here as you can see so here we have just some potted plants uh, these are some strawberry plants I have a bunch of native plants up there uh, besides basil and uh, uh, rosemary plant and aloe vera up here um, I'm going to talk more about the native plants uh, native varieties probably in the next episode uh, or so this is a banana plant coming up here and then this is again a native plant it's a red uh, flowering uh, current uh, it's a northwest variety and then you have these are um, I don't know what they call it in English but uh, in our language we call it uh, gongura like it's kind of a sorrel sorrel leaf a variety an Indian variety which we use in our cooking some flowers some lavender from seed again uh, these are jalapenos they're just seedlings I'm not sure if it would reach to fruition again red peppers these are the sorrel plants the same Indian variety and then garlic chives up here this is a vermi compost bin as you can see this is just a black tutti bin it has some holes up in the top for air to flow through and a couple of holes in the bottom and it is just kitchen organic matter as you can see the earthworms are thriving and converting all of it so it's just a mix of some garden soil uh, some paper and then some cocoa peat uh, and then organic matter for it to compost you can see more worms up here up here just take these around if you can see those they really don't like light so <laughs> yeah so they need a, a little bit cooler shady place so they are down in the garage as many of you think it's not at all stinky it f it smells uh, fresh and it smells like mud and you just make need to make sure that you don't have too much organic matter just enough for the worms to feed and it's a good proportion of both organic matter and brown matter which is basically dried leaves and cocoa peat or paper newspaper this is a, the other half of the front yard right before the door uh, so it's currently in a very sad state uh, so this is our next project what we are going to do is 
uh, using a no dig method uh, so we don't want to repeat the mistake we did earlier of disturbing the land so to keep the soil and whatever is living within it intact we are hoping to use a no dig method and have uh, just the native varieties growing here only plants that are native uh, to to this land uh, and that have a cultural significance to the native people here so that's a big project coming and we'll keep you posted on that project